Welcome to Football Daily. This is how Marcus Rashford became a national hero. On the 25th of February 2016, an 18-year-old Marcus Rashford was unexpectedly thrown into the Manchester United starting lineup for a crucial Europa League knockout tie against Danish outfit FC Michelin. He made quite the impact, netting a second half brace to help send United through and repay the faith shown in him by then Red Devils boss Louis van Gaal. In the four and a half years since, the English forward has gone from strength to strength improving his all-round game, becoming a more physically imposing threat and increasing his goal output year on year. In doing so, developing into one of Europe's best young attackers and a talismanic figure at Old Trafford. But Rashford has also become highly respected for the work he has done away from the field. Socially conscious and determined to use his platform for good, the England international has spearheaded programmes to help vulnerable people during the coronavirus crisis and has become a leading voice in the fight to end child poverty, helping to dispel the stereotype of English professionals as being unintelligent, self-interested and out of touch. In June 2020, he even played a key role in forcing the UK government's hand on social policy, with the Prime Minister Boris Johnson going back on plans to scrap free meals for children from low-income families during the summer holidays following an impassioned social media campaign from the United Forward. The victory showed just how influential footballers can be in the wider world and has made Rashford a hero for millions of people in Britain, including many who have never seen him kick a ball. But how did the young athlete become such a figurehead on and off the pitch? Welcome to Everything You Need to Know, the series where we tell the stories behind some of football's defining moments. Marcus Rashford was born on the 31st of October 1997 and lived in a number of places in South Manchester while growing up, including Withenshaw, which is about a 15 minute drive from Old Trafford. At five years of age, he began playing with Fletcher Moss Rangers, a grassroots soccer school which has seen over 90 of its pupils go on to become professionals, with Wes Brown, Danny Welbeck and Jesse Lingard just a few of the players to pass through their ranks before him. Fletcher Moss chairman Ron Jameson later noted how, as a six-year-old, Rashford already possessed a powerful shot, saying, I have never seen a kid strike a ball as well at his age, and he did it time and time again. And it wouldn't take long before he followed in the footsteps of Welbeck and Lingard. At seven, he joined the club he loved, Man United, apparently rejecting Everton and Liverpool in the process and having already trained with crosstown rivals Man City. But pursuing his football dreams was far from simple and required a big effort from his family. In a recent interview, Rashford talked about the experience of growing up in a single parent household with four other children and the struggles his mother Melanie faced in keeping food on the table. The area of South Manchester he grew up in was also found to have over a third of children living in poverty in 2018, while the number of kids eligible for free school meals at the primary school he attended is double the national average. According to his former coach Dave Horrocks, gangs were prominent in these areas too, and Melanie was determined to get her son out of this environment. With Man United offering boys accommodation closer to the training facilities and a new school from the age of 12, she pushed for him to join the programme a year early. Around the same time, Rashford penned a letter as part of a school project, writing, I want to make my family proud, I promise I will work my hardest. This commitment was echoed by his older brothers Dwayne and Dane. When Marcus first joined the United Academy, Dwayne learned to drive so he could take him to training and the pair later started a sports management company to represent him as an athlete. It's perhaps no coincidence then that Rashford always came across as a particularly well-grounded individual, despite his swift meteoric rise from hopeful academy graduate to Man United first team regular. The moment Anthony Martial injured his hamstring in the pre-match warm-up on that fateful night in February 2016, the 18-year-old's life changed forever. Three days after leading the comeback against Michelin, he made headlines again, scoring twice on his Premier League debut in a 3-2 win over Arsenal, and less than a month later, sumptuously nested the winner in his first Manchester derby. Having been a virtual unknown before being given his chance, the teenager ended the campaign with eight goals from 18 appearances in all competitions, starting all but one of the games for which he was available, and helping United lift the FA Cup 
their first silverware in three years. In just over three months, Rashford had won the hearts of the Old Trafford faithful and become the poster boy for the post-Ferguson era, embodying the fans' hopes of the club returning to its former glory. However, this newfound status never seemed to phase the youngster, nor did it make him overconfident. Interviews with Rashford portrayed him as mature for his age, intelligent and eager to learn from older teammates, and revealed the tight-knit relationship that endured between him, his family and his childhood friends. Meanwhile, his strong work ethic and determination to improve each element of his game made him a firm favourite of incoming manager Jose Mourinho. The Portuguese coach, infamous for his distrust of young players, handed Rashford 105 appearances in his two full seasons as manager, more than any other outfield player, and like many who have worked with the young forward, held his character in high regard. In one press conference, he proclaimed, Marcus is a fantastic boy, very grounded, we love him. And while his performances suffered at points during this time, with Mourinho's tactics often leaving him isolated, Rashford has since credited the former Chelsea manager with aiding his development, saying it was a tough period, but a period that made me a better player. He also attributed Mourinho's tutelage as having given him the mental toughness to succeed in the long term, and under the more freeing influence of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, this progress has been evident. Before the Premier League was suspended in March 2020, he had already posted his best ever goal tally despite succumbing to a long-term injury two months earlier, consolidating himself as the side's number one attacking threat. And this same mental toughness has helped Rashford in his role as a public figure. In 2019, he began to develop a stronger voice, criticising social media companies on their efforts to combat racism and publicly supporting England cricketer Ben Stokes after his family was targeted by the Sun newspaper. He also launched In The Box, a campaign encouraging members of the public to make up boxes of essentials to distribute to homeless shelters in Manchester over the Christmas period something Rashford had done with his family the previous year. Three months later, he hosted a poetry competition for children with hearing loss, learning sign language as part of the process. And when the coronavirus pandemic hit Britain in March 2020, forcing schools to close, Rashford was quick to act, teaming up with food charity Fairshare to give out meals to vulnerable children affected by the lockdown. Setting the target of raising £100,000, he worked to boost the profile of the initiative through social media and the national press, and by April, that figure had risen to over £20 million, with a number of supermarkets heeding Rashford's call to action, allowing the charity to distribute 3 million meals a week. He then went a step further, publishing a powerful open letter to the UK government, who were planning to scrap free school meals for children during the summer holidays. In it, he noted how a quarter of the 1.3 million children eligible for the programme had received no support during the lockdown, how 45% of children in black and ethnic minority groups are living in poverty, and how the number of children living in poverty in Britain was due to rise by a million by 2022 while calling out the deficiencies in the country's benefit system. Rashford's message that this is not about politics but about humanity struck a chord with the public, while interviews with the BBC and an article in The Times helped push this message further. Under considerable pressure, the government performed a U-turn, announcing a £120 million Covid summer school fund, and Rashford even found himself being congratulated by the Prime Minister Boris Johnson who, during his career as a journalist, had described children of single mothers as ill-raised, ignorant and aggressive. With his 23rd birthday on the horizon, Marcus Rashford has already achieved what most public figures could only dream of doing in a lifetime. As his importance to the Red Devils grows on the field, he has taken the responsibility that comes with the platform he possesses and is leading by example. And by the sounds of it, this is a lifelong commitment, as typified by his pledge to keep fighting until no child in the UK has to worry about where their next meal is coming from. Most notably though, this hasn't been a sudden light bulb moment for Rashford. As he recently stated in an interview with the New York Times, I always said that if I was ever in a position to make a difference, then I would. So that was everything you need to know on how Marcus Rashford became such a heroic public figure. 
If you'd like to support any of the causes spoken about in this video, the links are in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, why not click on screen right now and check out the rest of the Everything You Need to Know series, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Football Daily. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.